turning to uh, mo the uh, Mortgage Professionals Canada, uh, Mr. Taylor. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much indeed for the opportunity to present to the committee today. Uh, my name is Paul Taylor. I'm President and CEO of Mortgage Professionals Canada. We are. I... Thank you, <laughs> Paul. Please, thank you. I'm just going to heads down and read it. Yeah. Mortgage Professionals Canada is Canada's Mortgage Industry Association, representing 11,500 individuals and over 1,000 companies. We include mortgage brokers, mortgage lenders, mortgage insurers, and service industry providers. The mortgage broker channel we represent originates 33% of all mortgages in Canada and over 50% of mortgages for first-time home buyers, which equates to approximately $80 billion worth of economic activity annually. Canadians are also increasingly choosing mortgage brokers to obtain a mortgage. Uh, our most recent data shows that year-over-year year, mortgage brokers have been used 9.6% more this year than last. Um, not all of the traditional banks' products are available through the mortgage broker channel, though, which is an important distinction to make. And the recent changes are having a cumulative negative impact on the mortgage marketplace and ultimately on the Canadian consumer. Uh, in light of these, we're asking for some slight amendments to portfolio insurance, which I will get to shortly. Um, as the committee is probably very well aware, as of November 30th, all mortgages submitted for inclusion in portfolio insurance are now subject to the same stress test as high ratio insured mortgages, and many important categories have also been made ineligible. These changes disproportionately impact non-traditional bank lenders who rely upon the portfolio insurance mechanism for liquidity and ease of access to capital. And as an example of the impact of these changes, Genworth Canada estimated in October 2016 that if submitted today, approximately one-third of their total volume of mortgage insurance written would no longer be eligible. Banks can take loans onto their balance sheets smaller lenders do not have the same capital volumes to effectively compete. So as a result, all ineligible portfolio insurance mortgage products now have to be financed by the smaller lenders through other private capital mechanisms, which makes their products more costly for consumers and therefore uncompetitive. From a policy perspective, if the intent of the stress, is stress test is to protect highly leveraged buyers from themselves, then all consumers should be subject to the stress test to ensure a fair marketplace. Um, OSFI could achieve this by amending the required underwriting guidelines. Um, also, setting the stress test at the Bank of Canada's current five-year rate serves to imply that the government's intention was to favor the big banks over smaller lenders. The rate is set by the mode of the big five banks' posted rates, which in effect allows the banks to control the rate that creates their competitive advantage. An important contextual note while many of the non-traditional bank lenders do not fall within OSFI's regulatory purview, it would be incorrect to suggest they are not regulated. Each province has its own regulations related to mortgage lending, and non-traditional bank lenders statistically originate mortgage loans with equivalent or slightly better default rates than the banks. For Canadian mortgage consumers, non-traditional bank lenders play an invaluable and necessary role in a competitive marketplace. Um, there are some significant negative impacts on price of these changes. Um, as of January 1st, the average cost for a conventional mortgage fund has increased by 25 basis points, uh, but in real dollars, that's about $2,300 over a five-year term. Uh, through the full amortization period of the mortgage, it's about $10,400. In addition to these additional costs, Mortgage insurers are increasing their insurance premiums on non-conventional mortgages for the third time in three years. Uh, this is due to OSFI's newly released capital adequacy guidelines. The premiums in some loan-to-value categories are jumping by more than a whole percentage point of the value of the mortgage, and these, of course, will be costs passed on to the ultimate consumer. The stress test also creates a reduction in the purchasing power for many Canadians, which some of the other panelists here have sort of discussed. We have some regional issues as well actually created by those. Um, and many of these will be first time buyers. Our chief economist, Will Dunning, tells us the stress test will mean home buyers will have their calculated gross and uh, total debt servicing ratios increased by five to 7.5 percentage points which is going to have a material impact on their purchasing power without really changing any of their specific details. 
um, the spin-off impacts of a reduction in purchasing power for the middle class could have the unintended consequence of actually creating the scenario that these policies, I think, were aimed to prevent, which is a national debt crisis caused by a significant economic decline. The new capital requirements from OSFI also require insurers to look at two new characteristics of a loan to determine how much capital they need to hold on hand to portfolio insure it, credit scoring and geography. We're concerned that these changes create regional price and access disparities that will disproportionately impact middle class Canadians in areas deemed high risk. The proposal to introduce risk sharing in the market would also cause major price and access disparities. Um, while Canada has employed historically low default rates, somewhere below one third of one percent, I think we heard it was 0.28 percent currently on Monday, data has always demonstrated that job losses are the number one trigger for mortgage defaults. So under a risk sharing structure, as regional economies suffer downturns, then um, local mortgage costs are going to proportionately increase. And we would suggest this is the exact opposite result than the government would like to see and oppose the social mechanism that CMHC and the securitization program is intended to create. So in conclusion, the changes announced negatively affect the mortgage broker channel as a whole and Canadian consumers have been more and more inclined to use the services of a broker to provide choice, advocacy, and support, and to assist in the technical requirements of mortgage qualification. Placing competitive disadvantages then for the non-traditional bank lenders will adversely affect this segment of the Canadian mortgage marketplace, which consumers clearly are voting for with their purchasing habits. We have five recommendations we would like the committee to consider to help mitigate the effects of these changes. First, suspend all regulatory measures not yet implemented. Two, adjust the November 30th change to allow for refinance mortgages to be included again in portfolio insurance. If an 80% loan to value ratio is unacceptable, please consider the threshold to 75% rather than removing eligibility of these products entirely. Three, that the government reconsider the increased capital reserve requirements implemented in January for insured mortgages. Four, we would recommend a review be conducted into the long-term impact of regional-based pricing on the Canadian economy as a whole and the potential additional harmful effects on already strained regional economies. And finally, please uncouple the stress test rate from the big five banks posted rates. Use an independent mechanism to determine the rate and require its use to qualify all mortgages, not just those insured. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.